We had big decline off the February highs uh, in a handful of markets like small caps and even the Nice index, broadest index. We did break briefly down below the D slows, but we didn't on the S&P. It made a higher low. It was uh, capitulation, oversold on an intermediate term basis. We got some small demand response off of it. So we expect some kind of a near term rally. And so we're back into retesting these key levels. You're going to watch this 4,200. And really the, the, the last stop is the 43, 30, 40 area where we had the August highs. That's the, those are the last highs from which new lows in the bear market were made. So that's really the key resistance level. But what I want you to see here is that really since May of 2022, it's been a wild sideways market with a downward bias into October and an upward bias since then. And we really need to have better internals and plurality and things like that to end clear breakouts in, in one direction, either below the D slows or above the Feb to August highs before we really have clarity on the picture. And we can see that reflected in, uh, in the supply and demand indexes. We didn't, so normally when you get a new bull move, the strongest of these is the demand index, which is in orange. Demand index is still below a downtrend line and was not nearly as strong as supply was weak uh, on, the, on the recent rally. So it's not behaving as you would normally suspect. Supply fell sharply, but came all the way back uh, and is now back above its uptrend line, which is negative because it moves in the opposite direction. And you can see that the, in the net spread index, we've just had a wild, volatile, nowhere action. We tried to break above the August highs for one day, came back into the range, false breakdown. We tried to break below the D slows for one day, came back and we're just in a soup in the middle here. So far, this rally has not gained a lot of steam on a spread basis because supply has come back substantially and demand really hasn't done much. So, the, I mean, if you just look at this alone, you think it's a mess. And what you want to understand is a kind of a rule of technical analysis is the trend, the big trend that is in motion is assumed to remain in motion until proven otherwise. And we haven't really proven otherwise. We haven't got any of the indications of a major low that we normally get. We haven't got any kind of indications in internals that we would expect. And so we're still, I think, in a sideways market that's kind of a little bit two-way in a very narrow list of groups and stocks. And the rest is kind of all over the place. And until we get a clear breakout one way or the other, you don't really want to do much. And you can see in major internals, similar picture. We were talking about these August highs really have to be broken with a plurality of major internals for us to sort of shift from a downward bias to an upward bias on an intermediate term basis. In February, we got close. We had one index go above the August highs and then come back down. And, and that, that was here. And that that's actually net points. And that's one of the ones that has broken back below the D slows now. So we're, we haven't really broken above the August highs until we do. We're still giving the, the, the former trend the benefit of the doubt. And right now, it's really a very mixed picture. You have the, the advanced decline line itself kind of back above its moving average, but not really challenging highs. And you've got the, the really weak one has been the uh, nice cumulative net volume, which actually made a new bear market low recently. And it's very rare if you go back to, you know, to the 60s when you get this data. And if you go back to the 20s, if you pay a zillion dollars for it, you can get this data. Um, in both of those periods, it's extremely rare for e any of these in that major internals to make a new bear market low in a bear market and the S&P not eventually follow. Now, eventually can be many, many months later. 
but this suggests that there's new lows potentially and there's still really if you're looking at the at accumulation it's very negative and net points is actually quite negative uh, the advanced decline lines are a little bit stronger and then uh, net new highs sort of tried to break out then broke below the d slows and is kind of in a triangle so really <laughs> You got to mix until we break one way or the other with some clarity, with some plurality, with some strong volume. You don't really want to do much outside of in the very strongest and very weakest instruments. And just to illustrate what we're talking about, one of the problems with this rally has been really poor participation. This is a, and there's a great chart that illustrates this. So here's the S&P. And when here's the S&P, the percent of the S&P that are above the 50 DMA, you can see that's been in a downtrend and we're still below 50%. Normally in a new leg up in a bull market, this thing jumps above 50 and stays above 60 really sustainably. Haven't really done that. And if you look at the mid caps, it's been a dead cap bounce for the mid caps. They're still at 27% above their 50 DMA and even worse has been the small caps, they're at 20.5%. Um, at so the very, these are the troops. Usually when you get a new bull market trend, the troops are following the generals. What we've really had is we've had the top 15 big cap stocks in the market have made up over 100% of the gains for the year. And the rest of the market is actually down and the mid caps and the small caps are particularly weak. You can see this is a small cap index and it doesn't look anything like the S&P. Broke the December lows and is kind of hovering there, not really bouncing much. If you just look at Apple, Nvidia and Microsoft, those three stocks, which are three of the biggest cap stocks there are, they're responsible for 91% of the gains in the S&P index for the year. That's a concentration. And if you've taken some of our market timing, you understand that when investors That's rotate into big caps, that is usually indicative of a top, not any kind of sustained bottom. So we're not getting the behavior you, you really ideally like to see in a new bull market, but we are getting a number of important thrusts and we are getting some intermediate term indicators that are, that are breaking out. Somebody has their microphone on, maybe they could turn that off. Uh, the probability, so because we've had the problems in the banking sector, and we'll see massive deposit, more deposit flight uh, in, in, in this year than we've had at any time since 1930. So what we see now is, is a the, we've had before already a number of, of, of recession indicators suggesting that recession is very likely those have really spiked up since we had the banking problems. This is the uh, New York Fed recession probability index, normally getting above 0.4 and even a 0.3, you get some recessions. We're at 0.6, which is the highest since the, since the inflationary 70s and 80s. 